Welcome to Framework Fortune and welcome back Framework Fortune community. I'm your host Ben and today we're going to talk about trading psychology in the stock market. I'm going to give you some examples, talk about all of the different ways psychology plays a role in the market and then towards the end of the video we'll wrap it up in one big bow and how to use psychology to your advantage to be a more consistent and profitable trader. So if you haven't yet and you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, check out the day trading playlist of lessons, and you can also find those all on frameworkfortune.com along with the rest of our social media, free signups with email, no paywalls, come join the community. But let's dive in. So in this morning's live stream, I jumped into BFRI. Now, my entry on this wasn't great. A lot of things wrong with this trade. So one of the things that I want to talk about in this video is the mental effects of trading certain types of stocks and what that can do to you. Not like a permanent thing, like it's going to cause any brain damage, but as far as your trading consistency. So after we blow the chart up here of BFRI and go into an hour chart, over the last two weeks you can see how many different trades I have took on this stock. All this trading of this same stock, battling it back and forth, for the past two weeks, my emotions actually finally got the best of me and I really expected this to have a lot bigger of a rip. So I didn't have a tight stop loss. I didn't even have a stop loss in at all. I got one now in just in case, but I held through all of this. At one point I was down 200, but the mental effects of battling with this stock for over a week and a half really affected me in this trade in that short term. The smart thing would have been to jump out of this trade when the pattern broke down in the five minute intraday charts this morning instead of holding through here because you can always get back in. The whole idea of looking at BFRI and the reason why I wanted this video is because of all this fighting with this one stock. Now you can day trade one stock over and over again. These were not the only trades I took. If you follow me, you know that I trade other things besides uh, just one stock. This one just happened to be giving me plays every day or possible plays. Let's talk about some of the emotions that I was feeling. Of course, there's going to be excitement from making money, but then there's also going to be FOMO. And FOMO is the fear of missing out. If you don't know, you basically are afraid that you're not going to catch a rip. And because I've been watching this thing and expecting it to rip, today FOMO got me. The fear of missing out on a bigger rip after battling with this thing for a week and a half made me not want to sell this. It made me very hesitant to even put in a stop loss. Some of the losses I took on this play early in the week, stop losses were hit very abruptly. So I had that in the back of my head. So when we're trading and we're already in a position, you are going to be having a lot of emotions go through your head as a new trader. Even as an experienced trader, after seven years, I still can't be a robot on every single trade. My human imperfection gets to me and you see it on full showcase on this trade here where it was poorly executed. Now besides FOMO, the fear of missing out on a big rip where you jump in at the top here and then you just get destroyed, a lot of new traders make that mistake. I'm an experienced trader and today I made that mistake. We look at PTPI. This was another perfect example of a FOMO play today. PTPI went on a nice run, 350, all the way up to 519 in two hours. And anybody who saw this man thought, oh, this thing's going to break over $5. It'll probably run to 7 or 8 or 9 or 10. And they jump in here at $5 and then they hold it, expecting this area to hold as some type of support or maybe right here at 475 and then you just get dumped on. That's why the trading plan is so important and having your stop losses figured out and put in there before you put them in there. Especially if you're like me and sometimes you just throw the rules and the plan out the window. If you already have a physical stop loss in there instead of a mental stop loss, then you can take some of the human element of flaw and FOMO and emotions out of it. So always use stop losses. There's no reason not to. So even if you do like using mental stop losses, just know that you have to have the control over yourself not to cancel that stop loss or move it down some 
because you think the stock might be able to rebound or whatever emotional attachment you're starting to get to it. And our second example we're going to talk about here is the fear of losing money. And this is probably one of the biggest fears in the stock market is nobody wants to lose money. They're scared. And we see these reactions to the fear of losing in the SPY, the S&P 500 index, that pretty much gives you an idea of the overall market direction and conditions. We had this nice push up, but we started getting real shaky on the SPY at the beginning of November, and then we had some nasty pullbacks. We get these massive red candles because people are afraid the stock market is going to crash right now. Inflation's high. There's new virus concerns and all kinds of other things that scare people. So they, if they think the market's going to crash, they'll probably dump. So stock market crashes or potential stock market crashes will cause that fear of losing money. And it transcends into day trading. Now, fear of losing money can make you put your stop losses too tight. If you're scared that you're going to lose any amount of money at all, you might have your stop loss. Let's say your plan is to get it an 11 and you've got a 1097 stop loss. Well, that's a three cent stop loss on a stock that's known to throw wicks around and is over $10 at the moment with a small float. So that type of a stop loss, you're going to probably get hit every time. And even though you are protecting your account, that fear of losing out is causing you to overprotect your account. Again, that's an emotional attachment that we're going to have to our money. But if you've done the technical analysis and you've done your plan, then that should take all that emotion out. You shouldn't have a fear of losing any money if you have your plan with your entry and your stop loss already calculated. How much are you willing to lose every trade that you take? before you take it. But if you look at the range of the prices, this thing's bottom range today is 875 and the top range is 1468. There's a whole almost $6, $7 range that we have. If you put a 10 cent stop loss in on this, you'll probably get hit as well. So on something like this, we know that the upside potential if it can break over 13 is at least to the 15 area. That's $2 in profit per share. If we want to keep a one to two ratio where we, where we're risking say a dollar to make $2, it doesn't make much sense to have a 10 cent stop loss. Of course, if you do use a 10 cent stop loss, it may give you a, uh, you know, crazy ratio instead of a one to two, maybe like a one to 10. But how often are you going to get stopped out if you're doing that? That can mess up that consistency. So on something like this, where you can go smaller shares, but the price range gives you a lot more room for the stock to run. Say you go 30 shares on this and it runs $3. Well, that's a hundred bucks. It is possible for this thing to run $3. We know that because it's already ran at seven like we were talking about. FOMO and fear of losing money, both of those are emotions you have to deal with. Why are we talking about psychology in the stock market in the first place? Because you're probably thinking you're a technical analysis guy if you've been following me and all that. With technical analysis, you're just purely looking at the charts. You're looking at the candlesticks. You're looking at your trend lines. You're looking at your level twos. You're looking at your past chart history all of that. So why do I care what somebody else thinks uh, during a trade if I'm just looking at these green and red candles? Well, we have to go behind what these represent. These green and red candles, this level two, this time and sales, all represents people buying and selling stocks. They're transferring ownership of a stock to another individual or institution whoever is doing the trading. So since these are people that are behind all these transactions, that are behind these candles, that are behind the level two and the time and sales, those are all just representations of people's actions. You take away the people, the stock is irrelevant and it doesn't move to any price because price only exists in human perception as far as currency price in US dollar or anything like that. Because it's people who are transacting 
with these inanimate objects of stocks and moving them around for the value of cash or whatever they're bringing their value to to trade, people are going to be subject to fear of missing out and fear of losing and all the other emotions that come along with being a trader. If we can understand that, we understand that behind the technical analysis is psychology of people. We can learn how people react, especially in group herd mentalities, which is a big thing in the stock market. Then we can also use that knowledge to correct our own psychological trading issues and use it to our advantage because we'll know most of the time or at least be able to get a good idea of what the herd mentality is going to do. People in large numbers tend to be very stupid and that is because feelings and emotions are amplified. So if you have millions of people say coming into BFRI on this candle, their fear of missing out especially up in here, is going to be amplified by how many people are feeling that same emotion. So if we know this is a FOMO play, but we also know that there's been a lot of selling pressure on it in shorts, we would know ahead of time, more than likely, it's not going to continue to break out because it hasn't the rest of the time. People have not been willing to continue to push this stock up, looking back through this past chart history. Because what are we looking at in this past chart history? We're looking at the transactions of people. This is all what happened last couple of weeks with people in this certain stock. What were they doing? We've had more people buying it than selling it. That's why it's been continuing to go up. But there still has been enough selling pressure to make us weary of this. But because I didn't have my own emotions in check, I did not realize that that was the trap I was falling into on this FOMO trap when I should have because I had already seen all of this. So there is some books out there, there's some other videos out there, but not a lot of information on trading psychology. Just study regular psychology because it doesn't make a difference. People are going to have the reactions, the same reactions all across different markets, the same as the stock market. Just like Black Friday, why is everybody waiting in line to get into Best Buy? Because they fear missing out one of those nice, cheap, flat-screen TVs that's on sale. But it's no different than what happens in the stock market economy. Because, again, the common denominator between all markets and economies, people. So as you're trading and you get more experienced, you will just naturally start learning the feel of psychological plays. And sometimes the technical analysis may not be that strong if the psychology of the play is stronger. You might see some plays where a stock may be going down and it was supposed to probably go up and then all of a sudden it spikes up. Your technical analysis is showing, okay, this thing cracked. It looks like it's going to sell off, but then it pops anyway. Well, that's because you probably did not notice the psychology that's behind the technical analysis. So the first thing I would do as a new trader or an experienced trader who hasn't quite figured out the psychology of the market is work on your own personal psychology first. Get yourself where you can consistently not fall victim to FOMO, not fall victim to fear of losing out, not fall victim to any other human emotions. Have your trading plan. Continue to work on tightening your trading plan and sticking to it. That is going to be the most important thing because if you take out the psychological flaws and mistakes on your side, then you're already at a bigger advantage than the 80% herd mentality of retail traders that only trade off of emotions. You'll have that distinct advantage. And then once you've got that advantage, you can study every day in the stock market or crypto market or gold and silver market. Like I said, any market this is going to be prevalent in, you can study those herd mentality moves. You can study the fear of missing out in effect as it pushes stocks up or it pushes stocks down. You'll see it day after day and you'll start to be able to make psychological profiles of the trader's 
that you are seeing on the other side of the transaction. You can see that, oh, this is probably going to be a big ripper because there's a million other people right now who are trying to flood into it and the thing is halting. And all this is going to be relevant whether you're day trading or swing trading or long term investing or even shorting. If you're shorting, you know, you still have the fear of missing out. You still have the fear of losing money. But that's it for today's lesson. If there's any questions or you need some more clarity, leave them down in the comments below or join the live streams every morning at 9 a.m. Central and you can ask me questions there while I'll be trading stocks in real time and trying to predict stock movements off of technical analysis as well as psychological analysis. Final thought, just study psychology because it's going to help you in your life no matter what job you are taking or what business you are starting. There's always going to be people on the other side of the transactions including who is transacting and giving your paycheck. So psychology will just give you an edge in general against everybody else in this financial war that we are constantly struggling and fighting. Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Stay safe out there. Till next time.